Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. So um, yeah, in this video we're going to go over our electrical setup. So this is how we set up our pitch um, and, the, and the different bits of hardware that we use to enable sort of the different appliances that we like to bring along with us. So um, yeah, I thought this would be a good opportunity just to show what we have um, in terms of that, that configuration and um, hopefully you find this beneficial. So our default uh, power source in the caravan is our solar uh, panel up on the roof that keeps our leisure battery topped up uh, and if we're doing any sort of um, off-grid camping again that will keep that uh, topped up on a day-to-day -day basis and obviously that will depend on how much sort of power that you're pulling if you've got a 12 volt TV, um, charging phones, that kind of thing but normally that will sort of be more than suffice um, for sort of day-to-day -day purposes of of, of the sort of requirements and the, the draw that you take um, from the, the devices um, and the leisure battery but that is our sort of default method that we have um, that we rely on so if we are about to go away the day before I will hook it up to electric uh, 240 mains um, and that's on the basis that we want to get the fridge up and running up to the right temperature um, just so we can go and get that loaded up ready for that travel the next morning um, and how we go about that would be your your, your sort of default um, power cord um, and an adapter in this case, which is sort of your what would normally plug into the sort of outlet on on site to a uh, a three pin plug. So again, we're just drawing power from the house itself, just so again we're not sort of uh, bringing down the leisure battery um, uh, by using the fridge. Uh, and just a safety note, whenever you are using the sort of main reel um, in terms of uh, using it uh, for a power consumption um, into the van, just make sure it's fully unwound. Again, you do not want it wound uh, around whatever you use, whether that's a sort of a plastic reel um, or something else. Again, the ideal position is it's fully out, um, just so again, it doesn't build up that current within that sort of circuit reel um, and then cause a fire. So yeah, do be careful with that. So when we attend site, we will always use a splitter. Um, I've heard before where some sites don't allow this. Um, so again, you will need to check. However, I've never been to a site where I've had to be um, asked to remove this at all. Um, so again, yeah, it will sort of depend on site by site, but you should be okay when, when using these. So when we have the splitter, obviously one one of those feeds will be using the reel and that will go to your caravan um, and then that's sort of your, your direct uh, feed to that um, and then the other feed we use a sort of uh, a camping um, setup sort of three pin plug and again you've got a fuse um, board on this as well uh, so again you don't overload um, the actual circuit um, and the reason we do this is so that if we are using any of the other appliances that we take along with us and we were to sort of overload it, it blows that instead of the whole caravan, um, which obviously you're then having to sort of faff around with extra stuff. So it just allows that sort of yeah, separation um, of the actual electrical units. And the same as the reel, um, again, you wanna make sure this will come with quite a long lead as usual um, so again just make sure this is fully unwound as well the same way as the reel itself because again you do not want to be having this all curled up where it's got a potential to catch fire uh, and overload so um, yeah just make sure that you're running it sort of from the main sort of electrical feed and sort of do a couple of loops just so again it sort of um, works its way to the caravan itself it's not sort of a, a direct line load a cable together and then into the caravan or into the awning depending on how you've got it set up it will need sort of yeah some separation so that is our default sort of setup like I say one feed into the caravan one feed into the awning one in the awning normally does things like uh, air fryer toaster kettle that kind of thing sometimes a heater if it's cold uh, in the evening and then the other side obviously is the caravan itself and that's doing things like the heating um, element um, the tv microwave uh, that kind of thing um, internally um, and like i said the reason behind that is like i said quite often is that when you get on site the actual breakers are quite small in terms of what that load can handle so yeah if you're if you're using things like air fryers straighteners obviously not for me, or hairdryer, 
again, they're the kind of things that will quite often sort of trip um, the actual electrics. So again, by splitting this off, um, again, there's less chance uh, of sort of, yeah, taking out the caravan. Um, but um, yeah, like I say, it's going to be sort of different setups for different people. But again, this is just sort of how we set it up on a day to day basis. When it does come to sort of um, tripping some of the electrics, this is where it's sort of really crucial. You understand how your electrics work in the caravan, um, where your fuses are, where's your um, actual um, switch unit is. So in terms of, yeah, if you need to switch that back on because it's been tripped or whether you need to check the fuses again you really should have a really good idea of how this all works before sort of attempting your first trip out so normally you're sort of on your drive that's where you can sort of plug everything in really test it out have a look at the manual the manual should give you sort of a wiring diagram of what the actual um, board consists of what fuse does what um, and, and again, that kind of thing. Just so again, when you do get to site and you're trying to problem solve some of this stuff, you're not in sort of a mad panic straight off. Again, you sort of got an idea of where to start. So what we'll do next is I'll show you what our electric sort of system looks like. And I appreciate this is going to be different for a lot of people, but it should give you some basic sort of checking um, and where to start if you are attending site and actually you don't have the power like you thought you had. So every caravan is going to have a main control unit. Um, for us, it's in the front of the caravan under one of the main seats, and that's probably common for most caravans. Um, and this is sort of, each one's going to be slightly different, but it's going to sort of have the same kind of features in there. You can have your main trip switches, um, your different parts um, in terms of switching those on. So one for the heater, hot water, one for the charger, uh, and then you've got your fuses and your main system power. Um, so if you're, if you're coming to site um, and not a lot of it is actually working, then you're able to sort of start in this location. Um, and obviously your control panel probably above your door will give you a good indication of where to start, what kind of power you've got coming into the van, whether it's sort of 12 volt or 240. Um, and the basic thing is obviously just make sure that your system's actually turned on to start with, that you may have turned this off because obviously this is the first time that you're using the caravan. Um, so yeah, maybe just as simple as, as just switching that on. One of the other things to check is when you're connecting different um, connections up to the power um, externally, it's quite often that you can actually trip the actual board. Um, and in this case, it'd be this blue connection here. And it should be just as simple as just pushing that back up. Um, but what you don't want to do is sort of change too many things. Look for the obvious turn it on if that's the case then go check um, the unit above your your door um, and see if that's then actually resolved the issue um, if it has great if not then carry on um, and see what happens next and, and this is the same with the um, fuses you may find that actually you've got 240 but certain things are not working and that's where you'll need to understand what these fuses do um, and like I say in the manual it should tell you what, what each one does um, and if you do have to replace them, just make sure that you're replacing like for like in terms of the actual numbers that are on there, the amps. Otherwise, like you say, you could cause damage to your caravan. Uh, in terms of um, prolonging the battery life, your leisure battery, a good thing is just to make sure that this whole unit is switched off. And you don't need to go through and turn each one of these switches off, just use the main switch. That will turn the uh, main power off to this um, and then that way, like I say, you've got nothing drawing from your battery. Uh, if you've got solar, then like I say, you should be fine just to keep this uh, running as is um, and, and then running off the 12 volt because that should keep it topped up each day. So regarding the fuses, as I said, um, if, if you're lucky, um, it should actually tell you what those fuses are. Um, in other places so for us actually when we pull down the actual uh, cupboard on the side it actually gives you that sort of indication of what those fuses are again what the rating is and the color and what the purpose is, purpose of those are for so again it gives you another sort of problem solving sort of technique there and where to start but again, it's going to be different from, for all of you. And that's why it's sort of crucial that you should really 
take up all the cushions, all the extra panels and have a really good look around the van, whether that's at the front or at the rear. So when it comes to the electrics, like I say, it's a really good idea to just make sure you know what's what, like I say, what the fuses are for, where to look for them, um, and, and knowing, like you say, when things don't work, the fridge, um, the heating, whatever, you, you know where to actually reference that back. It's really easy to sort of tend sight, something doesn't work, and, and you start to panic, and it just puts a complete damper on the actual holiday itself. So, yeah, like I say, for me, take the cushions up, really explore your caravan, see where everything is, um, where your electrical points are, look at the back of the caravan, see what you've got there, um, see what aerial sockets are, where they are. Again, for us, we've got one down the far end and a, a, an electrical socket is there to power the TV or whatever would be down there. But again, it's just sort of spending that time just to really sort of lift things up and poke around. Just make sure you, you haven't missed anything obvious. For us, um, or certainly for myself, it wasn't until recently, even though we've owned the caravan for a number of years, I actually found where the tail lights are um, in terms of fuses and everything. So again, that was only just sort of by really sort of taking things, uh, uh, different panels away and, and, and actually sort of not sort of taking things for granted and just sort of, yeah, go and figure, oh, that's something else. So again, yeah, just, just take the time to really explore your caravan. So this was the other panel that I found recently. Again, like I say, we've had the caravan for a number of years, but it was only where I sort of went along and started looking around and just probing, um, just making sure, like I said, there was no damp or anything else in the caravan and just sort of come across this panel. So I'm not sure it would be the same for everybody, but it's just that importance of just making sure that you, you do explore, you do look under things um, and seeing what you can find, because again, probably me trying to find this i would have gone to the main natural um fuse board and, and again would have come a cropper because i wouldn't be able to find what i was looking for um but um yeah it just goes to show you that not everything is in one place so for us uh our, our vans uh 2014 so it's got probably one of the older panels um but again it should all give you the same sort of indication of where to start so main power for the caravan and obviously what it's telling us there it's coming off the 12 volt um, it's not coming off the car and it's not coming off 240 and again you can use the view indicator and it tells you what sort of condition your battery's in and again the same if you had it hooked up to the, the car and again you'd have a, a green light here um, so again, if, if you've plugged in all your, your your electrics and you're on site and then you're expecting to see this one lit up, that's where you'll start your problem solving. Again, you'd make sure that uh, it's all hooked up outside as expected, uh, making sure that yeah, the actual um, trip switch hasn't gone on the actual power feed that you're, you've plugged into. You can then go sort of back to the front of the caravan, make sure that your, your fuse box hasn't tripped in the caravan itself. Um, or uh, again something as simple as making sure that you haven't turned it off um, but again this will give you your indication as soon as it comes back in and it detects that that light will come on so again it's just using these different techniques to just do that problem solving uh, and if you're running on solar again this will give you a good indication of what your levels are um, again when you're going out you can turn this off so again it's not using any other uh, the power with the van itself so this is where your 240 volts will come into the caravan obviously it'll connect into this when we're talking about the splitter it doesn't go here it would go into your source that the caravan site is actually providing and if anyone's wondering this connection, this is your isolation switch for your motor mover. It's nothing to do with something that you need to plug into. So yeah, this would be any socket that you need to use. Um, and obviously keep the door shut just so it keeps the rain out. So hopefully that's given you a nice little overview of our electrical setup, um, the different sort of uh, hard pieces of hardware that we use, how we use the splitter, um, the, the different sort of uh, panel locations and how um, things to look out for 
Um, but uh, yeah, like I say, hopefully you don't have any issues when you're away. But um, if you do, this should be able to point you in the right direction or give you a, a rough idea of uh, where to go. Um, but uh, yeah, any questions, yeah, drop them below and I'll come back to you on that front. Uh, and as always, if you can uh, consider liking and subscribing to the channel, it does really help the channel to grow and I would really appreciate that. Um, but um, yeah, we'll call it quits there and I will see you all on the next one. Cheers all.